good morning. Welcome to Worship at West. We're delighted you're here this morning. For those of you who are joining us online, thank you. And uh, we very much appreciate that uh, you have joined us in this way. Just a few things to be reminded of. <coughs> Camp Blast is coming up very shortly. Leah Cressman is going to be uh, going uh, to uh, be a part of that camp. Uh, we appreciate uh, your prayers for, for her. Unity 66 group will be meeting at Boone and Chelsea Rogers House on July 31st. Carly Wolf's Baptism and Potluck. If you'd like to support her, there's information on how to do that. Promotion Sunday's coming up. Make sure to, to be aware of that so you can help prepare your children. There's going to be a Joy Fellowship coming up on August 8th at noon. That'll be here. And uh, those of you who are 55 years of age and older, uh, you are welcome to be a part of that. This year's church picnic will be held at the Senior Center on August 4th. We're going to have uh, the center from 4.30 to 6 o'clock. And then from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, we have access to the burn pool. So uh, this is something that you can also invite friends to. It's not exclusive to, to, to West. Um, so if you'd like to invite someone to kind of uh, be a part of that event and uh, maybe get used to the people of West, uh, we would encourage you to do that. We still need a want of volunteers. And uh, if you are interested in that or know someone who is, please see Michelle Wolf. We'd like to have a, a child dedication uh, coming up in the near future. If you have a child that you'd like to dedicate to the Lord, uh, please see me in the near future. We are planning a ultimate griller. This has been a highlight for years and years. This year, we're looking at doing some things a little bit different. We usually hand out a package of hamburger and a package of chicken to everyone, to, to each of the, of the teams. But we realize that for some of you, you do excellent pork chops or steak or some other meat. And so this year, we're looking at opening up, and uh, I like ribs. Somebody does ribs um, with a side of M&Ms. Uh, it will most likely, almost certainly be in September but we would like to encourage you to start putting your teams together. Uh, what we're looking at doing is giving, giving you a, 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 some, some money to replace what we would have given in meat, and you can do whatever you want with it. If you want to put, if you want to put lobster on the grill, knock yourself out. So we hope that this will pique your interest and that uh, we'll have some fantastic things because you can do the things, you can cook the things that you specialize in. So that, that'll be coming up in September. Some other things we just encourage you to take a, take a look at that. Uh, Awana is going to be starting again soon. Also, uh, we have uh, schools going to be starting again soon. And uh, we just encourage you to pray for, for those things. And may that, uh, we, have, we have a significant representation in the local schools. And uh, I want to make sure that we support those individuals in prayer. So may we be sure to do that over the next several weeks and throughout the school year. This week, I had the opportunity to, to, to visit with George Bueller for just a few few minutes. Uh, this week, he's going to celebrate his 105th anniversary. There is an uh, address that you can send cards to. Uh, we would encourage you to do so. Um, George is, is a fantastic individual with a wonderful life story. And the most important part of that is that he loves the Lord. So please encourage him in that way. This morning, we have a a video that I'd like for us to see. 
Uh, it's, it's a video that reminds us of what we have and how important it is for us to be together as a church family.
Well, good morning. Um, it's good to see you all after being gone for a couple weeks. Uh, it's a Jamie's turn now to be gone for a Sunday, so uh, we're, we're glad to be here to worship with you this morning. Uh, and you might have seen an unfamiliar face on stage last week. Uh, that's Rachel's mom. Everyone say hi to Rachel's mom, Jeannie, back here. She's on keyboard with us this morning again, so uh, we're glad to have her with us. So if you don't know her, introduce yourself and say hi to her. Uh, if you'll please stand with us this morning, we're going to start off our service with This is Amazing Grace. Ready? And. Prisons 
This is what he does. He saves us. He bore the cross, deep the grave. Let heaven and earth proclaim this is our God, King Jesus. but Jesus who rescued me from that grave Yahweh Yahweh who gets the glory and praise nobody but Jesus who rescued me from that grave Yahweh Yahweh who gets the glory and praise nobody but him this is our God this is who he is he loves us what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim this is our God, King Jesus. This is our God, this is who he is, he loves us. This is our God, this is what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross. seated and will the ushers please come forward at this time to receive our tithes and offerings the video that we watched this morning I first time I saw that was during the COVID shutdown when everybody was off work and I was on YouTube watching that video and it really struck out to me because like this church is important to me like that I was dedicated to the Lord in the front of this church I was married in this church I was dedicated my kids said goodbye to my parents and it is a place where we have an extra family. And I just enjoy that video this morning. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the blessings of our church family, how we can go to them when we're hurting and having things going on in our life. And we just thank you for the blessings in our church and that you would bless each one as they give this morning in the offering. In your precious name, amen. This morning, Kenzie Lisey will be coming and sharing special music.
pretty fun playing with your niece. <laughs> Talented group of kids, that's for sure. If you'll stand with us, we'll continue our worship within Christ alone. Tomorrow 
Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Luke, chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 13. Luke 12, beginning to read at verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, I'm going to stop here for a minute. In these times when somebody said, man, it's an indication that they're a little irritated. An example today might be our president when he says, come on, man. And so we find that Jesus has asked this question. He's, he's a little bit irritated at receiving this. Who appointed me judge or arbiter between you? And then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. 
A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told him this parable, if, a, if the, ground of a cert, the ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop, he thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of food, plenty of good things stored up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich toward God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the opportunity to be here, the opportunity to look into your word, the opportunity to hear from you. And Father, we pray that we might listen to your spirit with attentive ears. And Lord, that uh, you might be able to work in our lives and accomplish your purpose and your will in us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a communion service. We serve communion at least four times a year. There's nothing magical about four times a year. There's no biblical mandate that specifies four times per year. Quarterly communion is the attempt to obey the biblical instruction to never forget what Christ did for us on the cross, but also to avoid observing this ordinance so often as to render it routine and meaningless. We never want communion to become a meaningless ritual. This is also why we include a variety of serving, ways of serving communion at times, inviting you to come to the front, and as today, uh, we will be serving you. We're going to be talking about taking things for granted today. We never want to take communion for granted. We never want it to become common or mundane. We never want to take our salvation for granted, for it to become common and mundane and it's just something that's there and we don't really appreciate it and we lose, we lose the, constant, the, 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 the gratitude that we should have for it. And so this morning, we need to define what it means to take something for granted. It is to assume that what is there for us now will always be there for us. It is to disrespect the thing or person or institution being taken for granted. It is to fail to give the thing taken for granted the attention or value that it deserves. Or to fail to properly appreciate something, especially as the result of over-familiarity. So what causes, what causes someone to take something for granted? Sometimes something like prolonged prosperity. God has blessed us, he continues to bless us, and we think he'll always bless us and we'll always have an abundance. And as we begin to think about that and, and as we begin to expect it, we take it for granted. a lack of gratitude. When we fail to be thankful for something, we will take it for granted. Self-sufficiency. I'm the one that did it. And we take credit for what God has given us to ourself, and that takes God for granted. 
taking credit for one's successes. We, we develop a sense of entitlement. I am a Christian. I have followed God for many years. God has always been gracious to me and he is obligated to continue to bless me. And sometimes we take things for granted simply because they happen the same way every time. We've been having all sorts of fun with our computer system this, this week. Um, if you notice me fumbling a little bit, it's because I don't have my notes except in the computer. And uh, it's been a frustrating week that way. But what kinds of things do we take for granted? What about our health? If we've always had good health, we think, well, I always will. And then when an then when an illness comes, we complain instead of thanking God for our general good health. What about food? What's for lunch? I'm, I'm going to see who, maybe I can see who I'm going to come over for lunch today. What's, what's for lunch today? Some of you have something in the oven. Some of you are planning to go to, out to eat. But most of us, as we, as we eat our lunch today, we're going to worry that we're going to eat too much. And we take it for granted that we'll always have abundance of food. We take that for granted. We take for granted that we'll always have water to drink, good clean water. We take for granted that we'll have shelter and always have good, good shelter. And then there's this one. Sometimes we take our loved ones, and I'm going to just do a little tangent. And I'm going to talk about taking our spouses for granted. Never take your spouse for granted. Always appreciate your spouse. Be sure to say thank you. Be sure to respect your spouse. I could pull a dozen people in this building right now to come and to talk about what it's like to lose a spouse and suddenly he or she's not there anymore. Don't take your spouse for granted. I know, I know he's irritating. I know he leaves his socks on the floor. I know he never helps around the house. I know she's kind of been complaining a lot lately. I know she has her faults. Just a quick story. In the ICU waiting room, I met a lady, an older lady. Her husband was back in surgery and his life was very much in question. And she said to me, I just wish that he would wake up and yell at me again. My heart went out to this lady.
But even that ornery, he must, have, he must have been an ornery guy. He must have not treated his wife well. But even then, she... no longer took him for granted. If you still have your spouse, thank God for him or her. And appreciate what God has given. In Luke chapter 12, we find this parable of, we call it the rich fool. He had a great crop, and so he said, I don't have room to store it all. And we don't find any indication that he gave God thanks for that bumper crop. But he said to himself, what am I going to do? I'll tear down my barns and I'll build bigger barns and, and then I'll put them... And, and, and when I'm done, you know, I've got enough to retire. Some of, some of you have, have retired and most of us are probably looking forward to a time when we can. But are you going to take for granted that it's going to be just like it is today? That you have enough resources today to be able to retire comfortably? Don't take that for granted either. And so this guy... took three things for granted. He took for granted that there would be continued prosperity. I had prosperity this year. I've had prosperity every year. It'll continue. It'll continue. I'm sure of it. He took, he took for granted God's provision and considered it his own doing. He was a good farmer. And he probably said, you know, I planted, I planted the right crop. I used the right seed. I planted it at the right time. I did it right, and look, I got a great crop. And he took for granted that he would have many years to enjoy his goods. Eat, drink, and be merry. Some of you are familiar with the old Dairy Queen commercial. Eat, drink, and be merry. Eat, drink, and be merry. Eat, drink, and be merry at your local Dairy Queen. Am I so old that the rest of you aren't getting that? Uh, but more importantly it's, it's, it's maybe the fact that he stored up treasure on earth and not in heaven and so this morning it's really important that we don't take our salvation for granted you know there's a lot of other things it's important not to take for granted but don't take your salvation for granted. Don't take what God provides you for granted. Don't take the people around you for granted. there are some things that maybe it's okay to take for granted, kind of like this. I know, I know those of you who own Chevys can't understand this. But every time I get in my Ford and I turn the key or I push the button, I take for granted that it will start. But don't. Take that for granted, but don't take your salvation for granted. I kind of took for granted that these screens would work the whole time. 
that one's out, that one's not. Never, never lose your sense of amazement that Jesus would die on a cross for you. Never lose your sense of gratitude for what Jesus did to secure salvation for you. Never lose your sense of love. Never let it fade for the God who gave his only begotten son for your salvation. Never lose your, your, your sense of devotion and commitment that needs to be lived out in obedience. This morning as we come to the communion table, some of you have been, have been observing the ordinance of communion for years and years and years. And you came this morning and you go, oh, it's communion again. Instead of, wow, it's communion again. We're going to stop and remember how good God has been to us, how much he loves us, how he gave us his salvation, the sacrifice that he made. We're here to observe the ordinance of communion, which is to remind us that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And there is no other way under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the only way. May we respect what he did. May we treasure it. May we express gratitude for what he has done. And may we in our hearts never, never take it for granted. I'm going to ask the servers to come and, and help us serve this morning. At West Missionary Church, we practice open communion, which simply means that if you are a believer in Jesus Christ in right relationship with him, we invite you to participate. If there is some reason that you wish not to participate, we're not going to point you out or... or or embarrass you, just pass the tray on by. If you have a gluten intolerance, there are in the bread trays, there are little containers of a gluten-free wafer, and we encourage you to use that if you have a gluten intolerance. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and then later he took the cup and he gave it to his disciples but in our instructions on how to do this, we are told that we're to examine our own hearts before God so that we don't partake in a manner that's unworthy of the blood and body of Jesus. And so as the emblems are passed, we encourage you to pray, talk to your Heavenly Father. Say, God, is there anything in my life that I need to take care of? Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for those things before you partake of the bread and the cup. May God bless us as we spend this time together and as we remember our Lord's death, for it is his death that brought us salvation. It is only through Jesus Christ that we have any hope at all. Don't, don't take it for granted.
feast at the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord. I won't hunger anymore at his table.
Jesus took the bread, he broke it, gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. For this is my body which is broken for you. Let us partake together. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving your body to be broken for us. It was your sin, is, is our sins, not your sins, that caused you to suffer and to die. Lord, we acknowledge your great gift and we thank you. Amen.
Jesus took the cup, gave it to his disciples and said, this, this is my blood which is shed for you. And we know that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. May we remember and may we never take for granted the blood of Christ. Let us partake together. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your blood for us. We thank you for the willingness, for the joy set before you to suffer untold agony so that we might have salvation. Lord, in gratitude, we remember and we thank you for what you have done. Amen. Will you please stand with us as we close out our service this morning with one last song?
Let's join our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, you are an amazing almighty God. There is no one like you. There's no one else who would come up with such a plan to send your own son to die for creatures so much lower than you. For those who have willingly sinned against you, no one else would do that. Father, may we never, never take your love for granted. And then, Lord, may we share it with others. And Father, today as we come to the end of this service, dismiss us with your blessing and your, may your light shine through us to many others. May your blessing rest upon us, but may we never take it for granted. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you. <laughs> Sorry. May the Lord bless you. You are dismissed. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard. Never fail.